Now, whenever I talk about the High Republic era, I get a wide variety of reactions or responses from my fellow fans in regards to it. Anything from, oh yeah, I forgot that's a thing, how's it been? To those who have read some or most or even virtually all of it, who have varying opinions on it. Some good, some not so good. And then there are those who absolutely despise it. Even though many of them have never read a single page of it, they still hate it all the same for one reason or another, which, sure, is their prerogative. But either they've heard some of the silly or stupid things about it, like the fact that, yes, there is a character named Geode who is basically a living rock and is a navigator aboard a ship called Vessel. Also, many see it, right or wrong, as a sort of pet project of Kathleen Kennedy. She was even the one who sort of came up with the initial idea for the whole time period by posing the question, what scares a Jedi? Which is actually a rather peculiar question to ask or base this all off of, since that's something Jedi just kind of do as is. They face their fears and overcome them. This was something even the Rise of Skywalker understood and got right, and is easily my favorite line from the entire sequel trilogy. Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. Either way, as someone who has kept up with virtually all of it, there's some young reader stuff I haven't read, the High Republic has been an interesting topic that some people declare an utter failure, and others say has been an overwhelming success. And then there are many others who don't really care much about it either way, especially considering how few people, when you consider the sheer number of Star Wars fans out there, who don't get all that into the books and comics. But anyway, until very recently, it's been rather difficult to prove or disprove either of those positions, either success or failure, or somewhere in between. There's been no real hard evidence either way, other than the fact that the first book to be released, Light of the Jedi, it debuted at the top of the New York Times bestseller list, and a few that followed it or were released after it also hit the charts. But it's been a while since we've seen one do that. And now we know why. Now we actually have some hard numbers to look at when it comes to the High Republic book sales. Numbers that come to us from the Circana Book Scan, which compiles its data from sellers of all sizes across the lands, from the big places like Amazon and Barnes and Noble, all the way down to your local Ma and Pa bookstore. Not that there's all too many of those left these days. Either way, from these numbers, we'll see that the very first book of the High Republic era, the aforementioned New York Times bestseller, Light of the Jedi, has sold roughly 120,000 copies in hardcover and another 40,000 in paperback. Which might not sound like a whole lot to you, a total of 160,000 since its release in early 2021. And in all reality, no it's not an incredible total, you'd have to be closer to a million copies of a book sold or more to be considered a phenomenal success or a phenomenal hit, and generally only a handful of books pull that feat off every year. But when you consider, from the research I did anyway, that somewhere around 15 to 25,000 copies of a book sold is generally considered good or to be a success by the publisher, especially if you're a newer author, it'll pretty much guarantee you'll get a second book deal. Well, yeah, this number, 160,000, is far in excess of that. It's no doubt considered a success or money was made from it. Though it should also be noted that this is Star Wars we're talking about here. This is one of the most popular franchises of all time, if not the most, with a massive fan base. not to mention the launch of a whole new era for said franchise. And to show the power of the Star Wars name in print, it should be noted that as of 2014, almost a decade ago, the original Thrawn trilogy, those three books, had sold more than 15 million copies. And no, that's by no means a fair comparison for a great many reasons, I just wanted to point out again the power of Star Wars in print, that yes, there is incredible potential for books in this franchise. Anyway, from these numbers and my limited knowledge, I think it should be considered a successful launch to the High Republic series, this first book I mean, though not a phenomenal one. However, the next main book, or book in the main adult novel series, was The Rising Storm, with roughly 60,000 hardcover copies sold, which is approximately half of what the first book sold. Which means, in theory, only half the people who bought that first book came back for round two. Or at least that's the case when we compare hardcover sales, which we have to do considering the paperback sales for The Rising Storm are not on this list. Even though, sure, we can extrapolate that it has to have sold less than 14,000 copies or less than the bottom book on this portion of the list. But we still don't have the exact number and I don't want to guess at it. And if you're wondering why I don't just go ahead and get the data for myself, or why I don't have more data in general here, well, this is the only list I had sent to me, and when I went to seek out more for myself from Circana Book Scan's website, 
Well, it turns out that this is a site or service primarily only used by literary agents and publishers and that it cost me $2,500 to essentially become a member and have access to their database. And as much as I like my videos to be as accurate and as informative as possible, that's a lot of money, so we'll make do with what we have. Anyway, so it seems here the second book, again in the main adult novel series, it sold half what the first one did, more or less, which sure probably sounds pretty terrible. And no, it doesn't sound good, that's for sure. But I think there were certainly a lot of people who generally don't read who got excited about a new era in Star Wars and bought the first book just because they thought, well, this would be the start of their reading habit, or they were just very curious. And some of those people probably never read more than a few pages, if any at all. That's just something that happens. And so I don't know how much we can truly take away from those particular numbers, that big drop-off, though absolutely we can conclude at least some people, quite a few of them it seems, bought the first book, read it, and didn't like it, and they didn't come back for the next one. But I think far more telling is what happens with the third book in the adult novel series and the culmination or finale of the first phase of the High Republic era, that being the book The Fallen Star, which sold 35,000 copies in hardcover which is only a little more than half of what the second book sold, meaning they lost almost half their readers yet again. Then we move on to the first novel of Phase 2, that being Convergence, which came out late last year and is only at about 20,000 copies sold thus far, which is, once again, close to half of the readers gone, and down 83% from the first book, when it comes to hardcovers sold anyway. And all this despite the fact that technically, with it being the start of a new phase, one that takes place 150 years before the first one, it's then a sort of jumping on point, meaning you don't have to have read the previous books to read and understand this one, making that 20,000 number feel maybe a little worse. It's also getting down to the point, as talked about before, where a book is no longer considered a big success by a publishing company, which was again around the 15 to 25,000 copies sold mark. And if this downward trajectory continues, keeping in mind there's going to be three phases in total, they soon won't be considered successes, especially again for a franchise as big as Star Wars, which, relatively speaking, does have a large contingency of readers among its ranks. All that said, attrition is going to be a thing in any long-running book series. The first book is obviously almost always going to have the highest sales numbers since it's the primary jumping on point and they'll inevitably go down from there, and the mark of success is essentially how many people you keep on the hook along the way, and or how long you keep them for. And so the problem is, it does seem like quite a few High Republic readers are squirming their way off the hook as things go on, and that roughly only one out of six who started with the High Republic era are still here for the start of Phase 2. Though it should be noted the second book of Phase 2, called Cataclysm, was released on April 4th of this year and is not on the list, which likely means it sold less than 14,000 copies thus far, though since there's no date on this thing, it's hard to know just when these numbers were pulled from. It could theoretically come from right before that book was released, or before Circana Bookscan has compiled those numbers. So in conclusion here, this really doesn't look all that good for the High Republic era. It's certainly not a runaway success, and you have to wonder what it means for the future of the era, especially with a series on Disney Plus coming out next year attached to it, that being the Acolyte. But I guess a lot also depends on what Lucasfilm expected this to do and what they consider a success or failure. For all we know, they're happy with these numbers, though something tells me they probably aren't. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about these numbers. What do you think they say? What do you take away from them? Or you can tell me what your experience has been with the High Republic, assuming you have one. Have you read any? What do you think? Whatever the case may be, leave your comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.